The cataphract, the heavy cavalry used by numerous cultures in the ancient world, with both rider and steed covered head to toe in armor, wielding both bow and lance, is one of the most well-known military units of all time. The question of the origins of this style of fighting, however, is contentious, with four primary theories existing for how the cataphract came to be. These four are the Iranian, Turanian, Charismian, and Parthian theories. Any discussion of them, however, is going to have to grapple with one of the more difficult aspects of history to actually trace, the history of technology transfer. In a cut-down form, the Iranian thesis basically argues the following. True heavy cavalry, for it to exist, doesn't necessarily have a set of rules it needs to abide by, but it does have requirements. Namely, the horse needs to be armored, otherwise the overall unit could just as easily serve as cavalry as it could serve as mounted infantry. And, oftentimes in the ancient world, this is what we see, with the riders themselves being armored but the horses are not. Many ancient sources make this distinction, with the most famous possibly being Herodotus' description of the Persian infantry wearing no armor at the Battle of Plataea, while, as far as the cavalry were concerned, only the riders were armored. However, there is a change around 400 BCE, with Greek and Persian sources now telling us that during a Persian civil war, the cavalry of Cyrus the Younger featured horses that wore plates on their body to ensure better protection against weapons. From this point on, Persian cavalry becomes increasingly described this way, as when Xenophon talks about Persian cavalry covered head to toe in mail. Therefore, the heavy cavalry that would become the cataphract originated in Iran. There are some issues with this, namely the possibility that some Greek works which describe the extensive armor were designed not so much to record anything factual, so much as to suggest to Greek militaries how best to design their own cavalry units. The next two, the Turanian and the Charismian theories, are, to a degree, interrelated. The Turanian plain is a portion of the steppe which, broadly speaking, extends from the north of the Iranian plateau to the Caspian Sea, and more or less includes the modern-day countries of Central Asia. According to this theory, heavy cavalry, in the cataphract style, did not originate in Iran, but rather in Central Asia. In order for this interpretation to work, it relies very heavily on broad, generalized descriptions of how Central Asians conducted warfare. They're horse archers, and they also use lances, so it would make sense that they covered their steeds in armor, thus resulting in the cataphract. The Charismian theory holds that, due to some ancient texts describing Central Asian warriors wearing armor, and due to the discovery of scale armor in the region, the cataphract developed in what is today primarily Uzbekistan. However, this falls apart because there are issues with actually dating that archaeology. Based on modern research, it's now been determined that the armor that was discovered was about two centuries too late, past the time when cataphracts had already come into play on the battlefield. The Parthian thesis holds that it was the Parthians, upon conquering Iran and other portions of the Near East, who brought heavily armored cavalry, specifically heavily armored horse archers, into the region, from whence all other versions of the cataphract were derived. These three ideas are all interrelated not only due to the geography with which they work, but also because of the reliance on Alexander the Great's military campaigns. After he conquered Persia, Alexander led his army into Central and South Asia, where he encounters horse archers and greater numbers of cavalry, so to defeat these units, he recruits natives into his companion cavalry, specifically Scythians, Bactrians, Parthians, and Sogdians. Militaries borrowing from other militaries is hardly a new idea, and because our sources from this period explicitly describe nomad cavalry in this region as having armor on their horses, what seems likely is that Alexander's army recruited armored horse archers and lance units to serve in campaigns where, quite often, troops became separated and cavalry could not rely on infantry for support. Thus, having the horses be armored offered additional protection. From here, bow and lance begin to be combined into the same unit, and following the death of Alexander and the collapse of his empire, heavily armored cavalry units, drawn initially from Central Asia and then copied, 
become part of the mainstay of Hellenistic armies, with the armor growing increasingly heavy as a response to Hellenistic phalanxes, until, to paraphrase the common description, the cataphract became so heavily armored they functioned as the tanks of the ancient world. But what are we to make of these arguments? They make sense on the surface, but do they indeed prove that the troops who would eventually develop into the cataphracts used by Hellenistic armies, the Sasanians, Sarmatians, and Romans originated on the steppe? Well, there's a problem, because this is where we have to deal with the issue of technology transfer. Between the 15th and the 10th centuries BCE, scale armor, which we have evidence of for both bronze and iron technologies, was used heavily across most if not all of the eastern Mediterranean. We know for a fact that the infantry were usually heavily armored. The Mycenaeans, Assyrians, Kassites, etc. all used infantry equipped in this manner. It has generally been assumed, based on a variety of evidence, that the horses used in cavalry were unarmored while the riders were. However, during the reign of the Neo-Syrian king Ashurbanipal, Military reforms were introduced, including the use of armor for horses. This was, as far as we can tell, made predominantly from leather and did not cover all of the horse's body, but Neo-Assyrian writings about the subject suggest that the implementation of this armor did actually result in a drop in horse casualties. Now, this is just one interpretation, posed by Potts in an article written in 2007, but if he's correct, what happens is that, due to long-standing contacts between the steppe and the Near East, if the Near East was indeed the place where horse armor originated, and much of the evidence we have suggests that it did, then it is entirely possible that the concept was transferred to steppe cultures. This also seems to have been one of those things that a culture develops and then, for whatever reason, lost, only for it to come back into the Near East after Alexander's conquests. Only this time, the steppe cultures had gone further and changed the leather armor to bronze and iron. So, one of the more likely explanations for the origin of the cataphract, indeed the most likely explanation, to my mind, is that horse armor was developed initially in the Near East by the Assyrians, from which it transferred to the Eurasian steppe cultures much in the manner that male appears to have come to the Romans via the Gauls, at which point the steppe nomads improved upon the concept. Following Alexander's conquests and the subsequent mass use of heavy cavalry by Hellenistic era armies, to a degree as a counter to the pike phalanxes of the period, the cataphract was on a solid road to development, with the end result being the heavily armored horse units used to such devastating effect by the Sarmatians, Romans, and Sasanians.